there is something seriously wrong with my guitar. Also, I didn't even play guitar properly, like at all. Um, I'm learning, but <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I'm starting the video off with this, but hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna to be bringing you my bullet journaling system. Now I'm sure you've seen probably like a billion videos out there about bullet journaling and quite frankly, bullet journaling has changed my life. <laughs> this is the first bullet journal I've ever done. Um, it took me about three or four months to fill up this much space. I don't know if that's normal or not. I feel like it probably isn't. I feel like I write a lot in here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I went out and I bought a new one. It's a moleskin and it's really fancy. I didn't even want to like to buy a moleskin, but I saw it at Officeworks for like $15. And I went to the cashier and I was like, oh, I want to buy this. And I just, I didn't say that. I just went and paid for it. But uh, yeah, it turned out to be 45. <laughs> and I didn't know what to do. I got a very good confrontation and I just bought it because I didn't want to cause a stir. So I have a really expensive bullet journal now, which is exciting. Um, I usually wouldn't splurge on something like this, but yeah. So this one is actually like a grid. Can you see that? Is that focusing? 19 by 25 centimeter. So it's actually quite a lot bigger than my old one, which is great because hopefully it'll mean I don't fill it up quite as quickly. And I've developed a new system uh, that I was implementing towards the end of my old bullet journal that was really transforming my life. I like to make self-discoveries and I have epiphanies all the time, but this one has stayed with me and this one, like I say it's transformed my life, but like I actually mean it. Uh, you know, I can't even communicate this to you. You just have to watch the video. So look, I'm just gonna do the thing and you can watch and we can draw and write and do cool things together. So, let's go. So uh, I just wanted to show you my old bullet journal before I sort of dive into formatting my new one. If you don't know much about bullet journals, I will link some videos below that kind of show you the ropes and the purpose of bullet journaling. Anyway, so it begins with your index page and then you'll have your goals for the year and things like that and your yearly page, planner pages, whatever. Then you've got your monthly overview, which shows you your goals and reminders and due dates for the whole month. And then you've got some monthly spreads as well, which I'm sure the other videos will go into detail about. But then you also have your weekly planner and generally my structure was weekly planner, to-do list every day and then a blank uh, spread for any ideas or reminders or notes or just random things I needed to jot down throughout, throughout the day. Generally I repeat that, so weekly planner and then notes and then weekly planner and notes and weekly planner. But I found that it was really segregating my life into productivity and uni and work and things I had to do from my spiritual walk and the things that I was learning about myself or actually wasn't learning about myself because I didn't really implement this strategy earlier. My structure has changed quite a bit since then and I'm much more free with, as you can see, <laughs> a lot more writing now and a lot more, um, I guess, yeah, personal reflection and things like that. So I thought I would show you the structure that I'm using at the moment and how it's really changed the way I see the world and what I prioritize and what I value in life. Okay, so welcome to the epic time-lapse section of the video where I will draw my entire bullet journal in about 20 seconds. In real life, this took me 20 minutes, so you're welcome. Um, but yeah, just a quick note that I'll only be taking you through the most important pages. The pages that you won't find in other bullet journal videos, the ones that I've sort of designed and that have made the biggest impact on my life towards the end of the video, because um, otherwise this video is going to go on for literally half an hour. Ain't nobody got time for it. Also, I will note that usually I will make my bullet journal a lot, a lot more creative and artistic. And if you'd like to see a video where I do that, just hit me up in the comments below. But otherwise, I just wanted to show you like the general structure of how I do my bullet journal, as opposed to going into too much detail. Okay, so now that I've sketched out every page, I will just go through and show you what the purpose of each of them is and how to use it. So to start off with, we have our yearly goals. Now, I once read a book called 40 Days to the Job You Love by Dan Miller. I'll link the book below. It's a fantastic read. I highly recommend it. It really um, helped me to organize my life and figure out what my priorities are. But in it, uh, one of the main points it talks about is splitting up your life into six categories. Now, I've slightly adapted these from the original book, but the principle is still there. So. Essentially, you have your spiritual, so this can be anything from involvement at church to daily time with God to um, like emotional regulation. So anything in the sort of spiritual, emotional realm that will fit into that box. 
Then you have um, Korea. This is in no particular order, by the way. <laughs> Korea is based around whatever you do for a living. So for me, that is my university course and also my YouTube channel because that takes up a lot of my time and I feel like it's my calling. So both of those things will fit under that career box. The next thing is financial, but financial is how much money you actually want to make and what you want to use that money for. The next area you have is relationships. So whether that's spending time with your significant other or catching up with a friend you haven't seen in a while or writing someone a letter or even spending time with yourself and investing in yourself, some, you know, self-love, me time, that all goes in that category there. The next category is hobbies. And this is basically any of those things that you keep putting off. <laughs> so maybe you've always wanted to learn the guitar like me and you have spent the last five years with the best intentions of learning it, but haven't quite got there yet, that would definitely go in this box. Maybe it's taking an online course, maybe it's going to the beach, maybe it's, it could be anything, honestly, but that goes in this box. And then the last one is your health. And health is highly important because if you're unhealthy, then you can't achieve any of the other things. So this includes both your mental health and your physical health. So for me, this would include going to the gym, meal prepping, um, positive affirmations in the morning, expressing gratitude, your health is just about taking care of your body and your mind. So when you have all of these six categories listed, it doesn't have to be these categories. These are just the ones that I think provide the greatest, sort of best well-rounded picture of life. You put in your goals and I like to pick about three for each category, but I will be going into more detail about goal setting, how to pick wise goals and how to achieve your goals in a different video. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Okay, so the next page I have is the visualize, I call it the visualize page. Now I think it's all well and good to have goals, but unless you're actually actively visualizing what it means to achieve those goals, there's no point. Like you could have a goal to, to earn a uh, $1,000, but unless you actually know what you're gonna do with that money, there's not much point in saving the money and having it just sitting there in your bank account. So I like to split visualization into two categories. Number one, who do I want to be? Now this could include things like um, Bible verses in Proverbs 31 that you know a woman of good character is more priceless than rubies and things like this and so who do you want to be do you want to be more kind and caring do you want to be more outgoing do you want to um, hold your tongue more and not talk so much all the time do you want to um, host more people at your house do you want to be more hospitable whatever it is you write that down here and the next one is what do I want my life to look like now this is something that I think a lot of people overlook when they're choosing a career or they're choosing a life, a life vocation. They might say, oh, I want to be an accountant because it pays well and that way I'll be able to have a house I've always wanted. Now that's fine, that's, that's great. But if you're not actually wanting to work 12 hour days, if you're not wanting to work in an office, if you don't like numbers, if you don't, you know, then it's not exactly the best goal to have. So what do I want my life to look like? Includes things like, well, do I want to have a family? Where do I want to live? What job do I want to have? Uh, what church do I want to go to? What kind of friends do I want to hang around with? What standards do I have for myself? Everything like that will go into this box. Now you can kind of pick your own visualization. It doesn't have to be in these categories, but I like to actively visualize what I want my life to look like and pray to God that he will allow me to see what it is that I really need. Because sometimes these things can be completely off, off kilter. Like we can have the worst kind of goals for our personality or the worst kind of goals for what God wants us to actually be achieving. Stop right there. Hang on a second, have a caveat for you. Yes, I'm wearing a different shirt. Yes, it's a different day, but this is a really, really important thing I need to tell you. You may be noticing that I'm talking about surrendering, but also about taking control of your life and that these tend to be in direct like contradiction with one another. Um, yeah, that's a really, really difficult topic and trust me, I get it. I've been there. I've read all the self-help books about goal setting and I've also read all the books about surrendering to God and I have really struggled to navigate this in the past, but if you want to know how to do that, um, then definitely stay tuned for a video on March 15th. I'll be re releasing a video on, yeah, how to, how to surrender to God's will and how to take control and what that looks like. Short answer is if your goals aren't in line with what the Bible says, they're probably not the goals God wants for you. But I also find that to be a really cliche throwaway answer, so we're going to be delving deep into that topic on March 15th. So definitely subscribe if you want to see that video and comment below if there's anything you would like me to talk about. Anyway, back to the actual video. The next thing I have is your monthly monthly layout. So there's 31 days in March and each, each day has a row. And it's split into due dates, so for university I have a lot of assignments due, so that goes here. Then I also have a YouTube schedule, so I post videos every Friday. So every Friday I'll be um, putting down which video I'm going to be posting. 
And then finally important events, so things like birthdays, anniversaries, um, conferences, things like that will go on here. Now I don't actually use this as my main calendar, I actually use a Google calendar and maybe I'll make a video on how I kind of use that and like I do calendar blocking and things in order to organize my time uh, well. But this just gives me an overview of what my month looks like and helps me to achieve those bigger, bigger goals. Then finally um, here I have my goals for the month. So there's six categories here and for each, each number um, corresponds to one of the areas. So spiritual relationship, career, hobbies, financial or health. And so I'll have my spiritual relationship, career, hobby, financial health goals here and I'll write them out. And this just allows me to um, keep track of where I'm actually at. So if my, one of my relationship goals is to stop so much um, self-hate, stop talking negatively to myself and embrace positive thinking, maybe that's one of my goals. Then I'll put that here and I'll say, say for, for instance, I'll do three positive affirmations in the morning and I will wear a bracelet that reminds me not to speak negatively to myself. So that's just a smaller goal within this overarching yearly goal that will help you get closer to where you wanna be. And I'll do the same for each of the uh, six areas. And I have my faves little area here and I like to write down things that throughout the month I find that I really like or that make me laugh or things I wanna remember. And then this page I find to be probably the most important in my in my bullet journal and that is my lessons and self discoveries page. So I've uh, made 31 boxes here, one for every day of the month and this corresponds with your daily layout. So I just turn to that. Monday, right? So Monday what I'll do is I'll write a prayer here and I've got my aff affirmations and gratitude and notes and reminders. But each day I pray that God will show me something about my character that I didn't see before or put me in a situation that will teach me a lesson. And maybe that lesson I learn in my morning readings and in the prayers that I say, maybe God shows me something about myself or maybe it's just during the day or maybe I don't learn anything that day. But if I do learn something, I always write it down in my lessons and self discoveries page and I just kind of summarize what I've written here, here, just so that I can look over the month and think, wow, okay, so I was, originally really, really struggling with gossip, for instance. Then by the 17th of March, I suddenly realized that I hadn't gossiped in over a week. And then on the 27th of March, I realized that I wasn't struggling with gossip anymore. I was struggling with this or the other. So that's just a little way I like to track my personal progress and the way that God is working on my heart. Because so often you can go through a week and you can be worse off mentally and emotionally than you were at the beginning of the week because you're so run down, you haven't spent any time with God. And you just feel really alone and empty inside because you don't actually know what you're doing or why you're doing things or anything like that because you're so busy. And this just allows you to take that little bit of time out and just keep track of where you're at. Anything you want to write in here is about your self growth and that is very much recommended. Okay, so next up I have my weekly spreads. So as you will notice, I split it into two categories. So I have my overall goals and to-do list for the week and this isn't split into specific days, this is just the six areas of my life plus other that can just be like random things that come up that I have to do. Um, but the six areas of my life, I split it up and this corresponds to the monthly spread. So I have my six goals here and that corresponds to my yearly goals. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm really trying to achieve my goals by breaking it down into monthly and then weekly bite-sized chunks. So if for instance, a goal of mine for the month is to spend an hour with God every day, my weekly to-do list and goals will say to spend an hour with God every day. So that way I'm actually intentionally achieving my monthly goal. And then finally, um, I will then transfer the goals into a weekly planner. So uh, for Monday, for instance, and Tuesday, Wednesday, all of the days I'll write down, spend an hour with God every day. And I will just kind of write out when I'm gonna do these things on a weekly spread like this. I then move on to the daily spreads. So this includes a very, very blank page. I don't like to fill this up too much. Generally what I'll do, I'll put a little column down the side and I have my morning affirmations. So my affirmations will be Bible verses that I write down because it's so easy when the battles of life come your way to forget how much you are valued and loved by Christ. And I always bring my journal wherever I go. And so if I'm struggling with something, I can open it up and read what God says about me. And that brings me so much peace. Then I also have um, the three uh, gratitude points that I make every single morning before I pray. I will say thank you God for this new day, thank you for my family, thank you for whatever it is. And then finally I just have notes and reminders. So invariably you will have something that pops up during the day, something you have to remember that doesn't actually fit into any of the other categories you have and so you can just write that in that column as well. So that's how I like to structure each day and I will do the same layout for every single day of the week. 
And I just have like a random notes and, and like doodles page here because I like that and I love drawing and I just find that really fun. So, um, I hope that all makes sense and I hope you learned something. My bullet journal kind of doubles as a prayer slash personal journal. I do use up quite a lot of pages, so I'll use up, I guess, 36 pages a month. Now, most of these journals are like 100 plus pages, so you'll be able to use it for like four to five months. But um, yeah, you will use more pages than you would with your regular bullet journal outline. Thanks for watching that video, guys. I know it was a bit of a long one, but if you're still here, thanks for sticking around. I hope you learned something new or at least were inspired to maybe try out bullet journaling for yourself. Um, let me know how it goes if you do try it in the comments below. I'd love to hear your stories. But yeah, obviously the system isn't for everyone. And if you're in a place in your life right now, I, like I'm fairly young and I think it sort of is pertinent to young people to really figure out what their calling is. So if that's you right now, if you're trying to figure out who you are and what God wants for your life, then this is a great system. If you figure that out already, then it may not be for you and good on you. Like <laughs> super stoked for you and I hope to be there one day. Um, but yeah, so if you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next week's video where I may or may not be painting my face and using modeling clay. So it could be very interesting. <laughs> see you next time, guys. Bye.